The princess peeped through the door and was aroused by the guard's muscular bite. So the princess took advantage of her role and called the guard to her cabin for a game of cards. As she shook her head, the maze left the room. The princess locked the door and returned to the guards. The atmosphere between a man and a woman in a confined space instantly became extremely romantic. The two of them eventually lost control of their desires and began to bow with each other's mouths. Princess Margaret is the sister of King Henry VIII. She's no less of a flirt than her brother. But this wonderful affair took place on her way to Portugal for her marriage. After a brief taste of happiness, Margaret ended up in Portugal. The man she was to marry was an old man in his 80s, who had to use a cane to get to her. But even so, the old king took a good look at Margaret and expressed his satisfaction. Then he made a boast. Muitos fios. <laughs> Come ajuda de Deus. <laughs> Which made Margaret faint. Even though she didn't want to, Margaret had no right to break off this absurd marriage. With a white veil and tears in her eyes, she was escorted by the man she loved to marry the old king, who can be your grandfather, and become the queen of Portugal, after the funeral-like silence of the wedding. The night of the wedding was even more horrific. Margaret followed the instructions to get under the covers, but there was a crowd of onlookers around the bed, all poking their heads in to see if they'd missed the show. And, it took almost all the old king's strength just to get into bed. Then the curtains were closed, but the crowd of nobles never dispersed, until the curtains were drawn again. The cardinal immediately came to ask questions. Did I, His Majesty? The absurdity of it all was too much for Margaret to bear, but she had to accept her fate. Suddenly she learns that the escort has completed his mission and will be leaving for home tomorrow, leaving her alone to face the rest of the world. Then the man she loved whispered a truth to her. Strange. Some man who's at peak of health, who's still young and full of life, suddenly collapse and die. By that same counter, some old man, his body's look worn out, his race seems run, they can go on for years. His words helped Margaret to open her mind. Early the next morning, she stood by the window and watched the returning ships in the harbor and made up her mind. Then she approached the sleeping king, and when no one was around, she grabbed a pillow to send her weakened husband to heaven early. The death of the king was the end of her union. Margaret was able to embark on a ship back to England. In fact, Margaret's method of killing was not very clever. Everyone in the palace knew she had a hand in the old king's death. But the new king had been waiting for this day for a long time. She did what he didn't dare to do. So he stopped investigating and set Margaret free. And Margaret, deeply in love, secretly married Charles on her way back to England. Because this time she wanted to make her own decisions. But this infuriated her brother Henry. Henry thought that even if her husband died, he could find another husband for Margaret to marry for his benefit. I am your lord and master, not your brother! You are both banished from court. You will relinquish your London houses. You will remove yourself from my sight. Do you understand? The king picked up a flagpole and prepared to pull vault over a stinking ditch. But then... King Henry was floundering in a half meter too deep stinking ditch, while his mates on the bank just watched the fun. But half a minute later, Henry was still flailing in the ditch. The squire sensed something was wrong, and immediately lifted the king out of the ditch and slapped him hard on the back. Only then did Henry spit out the mud and water and start breathing normally. Henry VIII could never have imagined how close he came to dying because of a stinking ditch. He rolled over in his bed in embarrassment at the memory of what he had just witnessed. And his brush with death had taught Henry a few things about life. I almost died. Yes, Your Majesty. No, no, yes, Your Majesty, I almost died. Don't you understand? Cardinal Wolsey didn't understand what Henry was thinking. But Henry was terrified. If he had just died, and he hadn't even left a son to inherit the throne, then the Tudors would be ruined. He'd always lived for pleasure and never even thought about the future. After the accident, Henry was even more determined to divorce Queen Catherine. He was convinced that if he divorced and married in Boleyn, and would give birth to a legitimate heir, so Henry officially tasked Wolsey with helping him get a divorce. He even took away Catherine's right to raise her daughter, Princess Mary. Before Mary was taken away, Catherine came to her daughter and told her,
plină. Mary did live up to her mother's expectations and would later become Bloody Mary. But that's all for another day. After sending off her daughter, Catherine's situation at court became even more difficult. Henry and Anne have begun to appear in tears at the palace and seem to be openly romantically involved. This was embarrassing for Catherine, who was sitting alone in the queen's chair. But just as Henry and Anne were having fun in the center of the dance floor, a sudden news breaks the happiness. It turned out that Rome had been attacked by Spain and Germany. The Pope has been imprisoned in Castel San Angelo. If Henry wants a divorce, he'll need the Pope's permission. Cardinal Wolsey, who wanted more power, said he would secretly call a meeting of the cardinals in Paris and convince the cardinals to grant him the right to be Pope. This would solve the problem of Henry's divorce. To Henry's satisfaction, although Anne would make out with Henry in public, she still had to fulfill her duties as the Queen's lady-in-waiting and returns to the Queen's chamber to serve Catherine, but is suddenly stopped by Catherine. But do not think to take the king away from me. Let him play with you. Let him give you gifts. He cannot give you his true heart, for I have that in my keeping. The two women's destinies converge at this moment because of King Henry. The war has just begun, and Anne is waiting for something to show for it. The ambitious Anne Boleyn is dressed to the nines for public appearances with the king. To the embarrassment of Queen Catherine, Catherine made it a point to have him wash her feet at night, but the arrogant and wore an extravagant necklace. Too expensive, put a deluxe. I am no whore, Your Majesty. I love His Majesty. I believe he loves me. The Queen knew that Henry would soon abandon him, as he had done with all the other women. Anne, on the other hand, was convinced that she and Henry were truly in love, but the time had come to put their relationship to the test. Cardinal Wolsey rushed back from Paris without the good news that the Pope had granted Henry a divorce. No one attended the meeting he called in Paris, and the Pope was released. This meant that Henry's divorce had to be put on hold. Meanwhile, a disease called sweating sickness began to spread. At that time, there was no cure. The rapid spread of the disease killed 3,000 people. Henry, who had just returned from a date with Anne, opened his treasure chest and immediately ate all the pills in it. Then he ordered the palace to be sterilized. However, when the valet who came to deliver the food fainted, Henry was so shocked that it bounced three meters away from the table and immediately fled the palace for quarantine at the castle. At the same time, Anne's lady-in-waiting also felt sick and could only comfort her by saying, you're not going to die, okay? But no sooner had Anne comforted her than the maid collapsed. She became the close contact of the infected. Henry immediately wanted to rush to see her, but was stopped by the cardinal. After all, as the king of a country, Henry has to consider his own health more than anything else. Henry felt a deep sense of remorse for not being able to be there for Anne. He immediately arranged for Anne to leave the palace. However, Anne suddenly fell sick and couldn't breathe during the journey. Even though she was only in contact with the infected for a short time, Anne was infected with sweating sickness, she was so frightened, she got out of the carriage and started walking on foot. Fortunately, it was this act that saved her life. Doctors have said that people suffering from sweating sickness should sweat more. This will increase the likelihood of recovery. And Henry has been exercising day and night for his health. After exercising, Henry looked at Anne's portrait and missed her. But he waited for the news that Anne was seriously ill. He immediately sent his personal doctor to treat Anne. However, after seeing Anne, the doctor apologized to her father and brother and told them to call a priest. Father and son embraced each other in despair, but the ambitious Anne eventually overcame the disease through sheer will. After a long time, the disease, which had claimed tens of thousands of lives, was finally over. King Henry rushed to his beloved Anne's side after a heartfelt prayer and hugged her in a circle. He thanked God for keeping Anne with him. Their relationship has been tested, but they're already thinking of the wedding of the century even before the Pope's decision.